Yeah, and maybe age group based too. You might want to get both of them. This looks like it would be for the younger kids. The coloring and so forth, and then these are more details. This would be for older kids. So uh, we, you know, right? We might want to get both because, of course, we start permitting uh, biking to uh, to school in third grade. So this would be great. Now in Walden, it's just like no, right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen things so, at uh, at Lake Summits. Uh, I think the Texas people brought some and uh, yeah, it's good. This is really good. Uh, it's informational. Yeah, right. I like good pictures. Yes, because he's getting a lot of Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what my husband's like. Yeah, just whatever you want. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. But they did. It was. Uh huh. It just went on, but it took us all day. It's not really a park so much as a, uh, it's about one lot, actually, they go to it, but it has a, the uh, repair site that you want, and uh, has a nice building there, and restrooms for the cyclists to do. Is it kind of like have like tracks where you can use the mountain bike? Uh, no, it's actually just off the road. It would be for road bicyclists who are just coming by to come in and use the facilities. In fact, I, I took some pictures of it myself. I can say. Okay. The City of Andalia Council meeting for April the 16th is now called to order. Our Vandalia family and community have been deeply saddened with the passing of our Vandalia Police Chief, Doug Knight. A wreath has been placed over at the Justice Center, and on Wednesday and Thursday, there will be a police cruiser at the corner of Bohannon and National. To lead us into our moment of reflection, I'd like to invite the retired Pastor Tom Weeks, who is also one of the Vandalia Police Chaplains, to say a few words in remembrance of our Chief. Thank you, Arlene. I'm going to read this because 
otherwise I may make a, may add a word and I don't really want to add in. As with most residents of Vandalia, it was with shock and sadness that I learned of the unexpected passing of our chief police, Douglas Knight, on Friday. Doug was more than the Vandalia chief of police. Doug was a friend. And Doug was more than just a vital part of this community. Doug Knight was a consummate gentleman, kind and caring to everyone. He was not a man to respond out of anger and frustration, but a man who would carefully analyze a situation and be able to discern not only the problem, but also a solution. Doug was a man who knew how to listen to people, not just hear the words they were speaking, but to truly listen to what it was they were trying to communicate. Doug never gave the impression that he did not have time for anyone, even when involved in something important or busy in his office, but in a caring way made them feel that they, that what they were, that they were important and that he respected them. Douglas Knight was a man of great integrity. He was honest and truthful in all his dealings, a righteous man who truly lived by the laws he had sworn to uphold. Doug was a man of honor and respect, paragon of virtue and morality, a man this community will greatly miss and who cannot be easily replaced. As a side note, I, I decided to add this. It's 15 years ago when my son Joe was 17, he was assigned the position of chief of police for a careers day event. Doug took him aside, had him go through a swearing in ceremony, and then led him through the day in the life of a chief of police. He had Joe sign papers and do a variety of things that day because he was the chief. The way he treated Joe and worked with him, the kindness, courtesy, and caring Doug expressed are still warmly remembered by Joe. And largely as a result of that experience, my son Joseph Weeks is a trooper of the Ohio State Highway Patrol, a canine handler working with the Montgomery County Bulk Smuggling Task Force. Doug would always inquire about Joe whenever we would meet and Joe today, to, this evening, said, please express to the city and, and my deepest sympathy. He also greatly respected and will miss uh, Doug Knight. With that, let us enter into our moment of reflection. Thank you. Would you please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, you've had an opportunity to, to review the Council study session minutes of April the 2nd and also the council meetings of April the 2nd. Are there any corrections or revisions to be made? Seeing none, they'll stand approved. We have no communication petitions or, oh, yes, we do. We do have uh, the proclamation for bicycle month. And here I am sitting with it and just went lickety split. Chuck Smith, would you come down? Do you want to stand? Oh, would you ever respond with me? Okay. Whatever you prefer. Oh, Your wow. Boss. You have more there than I have. <laughs> uh, Chuck, how many years have we been doing this? Uh, many. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Chuck and I have worked uh, together on a number of bicycle issues throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is always a wonderful time because we are proclaiming the month of May as bicycling month because it is also uh, proclaimed that this is the National Bike Month. And you know, you have been so instrumental in the things that we've done here in Vandalia for biking. And uh, we have the committee and I know that you're working with Amber on things that we can do and to enhance because we've always looked at it 
as uh, a way to help our citizens recognize that biking is so, so wonderful. And um, we're a bicycle friendly, and we share the road, and those are two things that you were very instrumental in getting passed. So, it isn't just all about you, but boy, have you been instrumental. And uh, so I'd like to proclaim uh, May 2018 as Bicycling Month. And I know that you have a number of things, because I didn't want to step on your toes, oh, no. because I know you're going to announce just a, some things. Just a few things, okay. thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And um, of course, Amber has done a great job, uh, actually, uh, in uh, advising our, our committee, our Bicycle Advisory Committee. She's done a great job. And congratulations to Amber on her new position with the city. Great. Thank you. And uh, I accept the proclamation on behalf of uh, Deborah Berry uh, and Hal Hunter, the other two uh, citizen members of our Vandalia Bicycle Advisory Committee. And uh, also our staff members, of course, Amber, as well as uh, Rob Crone, who was also here, and Officer Holly. And we appreciate uh, your support of our, uh, our Bandelia Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, we look forward to our August 7th Bicycle Rodeo as part of the National Night Out to take place at the Vandalia Sports Center. Uh, we thank the city of Vandalia, its staff and council for supporting cycling over the years. We certainly appreciate that. The city has been awarded the League of American Bicyclists Bicycle Friendly Community and Ohio Bicycle Federation Cyclist Friendly Community Awards. We want to thank uh, City Communications Director Rich Hopkins, who was here. There he is. Okay, there he is. Yeah. Um, he was um, actually, he has been doing a lot of work in promoting cycling uh, in Vandalia. And uh, we're getting together with Rich uh, Wednesday of next week, actually, to do some PSAs in the parking lot out here, weather permitting, of course. And so hopefully the winter will end in time for us to, uh, to do that. Okay, <laughs> great. We will, we will be there then. Okay. Okay. And uh, one thing we'll be emphasizing is our new three-foot passing law in Ohio. That's something that we worked on in the Ohio Bicycle Federation for eight years. It was actually four bills over an eight-year period. And that shows that you need to be very patient uh, in, uh, le with legislation and, and promoting legislation well, we in the state house, right? as you know. Yeah, and, know. And actually, Arlene and I were successful on... Uh, three pieces of legislation in her short time uh, in the State House, and we certainly appreciate that. You've done a lot for cycling, and, and we do appreciate that. Thank you. So, um, and also, uh, another guy who's done a lot for cycling in Mandelia is uh, Police Chief Doug Knight, and uh, he was a great supporter of cycling himself, uh, a great friend and, of mine, and a great friend of, of all Mandelians. And uh, we uh, were certainly uh, saddened by his loss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to give this to you. Thank you. And All right, uh, continuing on then, we have no uh, public hearing, and this gives us some time for comments from interested citizens. So if there's anyone in the audience who would like to make comment, would you please come to the podium, state your name and address for our records, and then your comment. Seeing none, we'll continue on with the city manager's report. However, we have no information items this evening, nor do we have any action items, nor do we have any old business. Here we go. We have something. We have a resolution that's 18-R-32, Mr. McDonald. A resolution awarding the bid for the resurfacing of various streets requested by the Public Works Department to Barrett Paving Materials, Inc. at the lowest and best bid price of $339,942.30. Thank you. Mr. Cruzy. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, so bids for uh, this year's street resurfacing program were open on March 28th. Uh, we did receive two bids uh, with Barrett Paving Materials submitting the lowest and best bid. Um, again, any excess funds we have from our curb and sidewalk and street resurfacing programs uh, will be used for the extension of the bike path in front of the rec center as well as other asphalt repairs around the city. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? Your Honor, move that we approve resolution 18R-32 as presented. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Lewis, second 
by Councilwoman Farce that we do approve resolution 18-R-32 as presented. Are there any comments? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Gerhard? Yes. Councilmember Farce? Yes. Councilmember Lewis? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Vice Mayor Herbst? Yes. Mayor Setzer? Yes, and the motion carries 7-0. Resolution 18-R-33, Mr. McDonald? A resolution authorizing the purchase of a trackless series MT MT7 municipal leaf collection machine requested by the Public Works Department from Trackless Vehicles LTD in the amount of the HGAC by contract price and declaring the current 1997 model leaf loader 710HLH to be replaced as surplus property. Thank you. Mr. Cruzy? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so we do have $180,000 budgeted for the replacement of our 1997 leaf collection machine. Uh, the Public <coughs> Works uh, Department did identify Again, the trackless series MT7 is a more versatile uh, model, and it is available through the HGAC by purchasing cooperative. Thank you. Is there a motion? Your Honor, I move that we approve resolution 18-R-33 as presented. Second. It's been moved by Vice Mayor Herbst, second by Councilman Gerhardt, that we do approve resolution 18-R-33 as presented. Any comments? Only one. I, I might add that uh, it, it states in here that uh, we're going to buy at the contract price, and that that contract price was 166,169.40. Thought we should have the amount of the contract price in the uh, resolution. Okay. Anyone else? It, it's in the resolution itself, just not the title. I didn't see it in there. Your section two. Very good. I stand corrected. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Seeing no, no other comments, would you please call the roll? I'm sorry. I was reveling in my own. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Councilmember Gerhard? Yes. Councilmember Farce? Yes. Councilmember Lewis? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Vice Mayor Herbs? Yes. Mayor Setzer? Yes. And the motion carries 7-0. Resolution 18-R-34, Mr. McDonald. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Energy Optimizers USA for the purchase and installation of certain LED lighting at prices set forth in the Ohio Council on Education Purchasing Consortium contract for a total expenditure of $97,340. Thank you. Mr. Cruzy. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, so this resolution does authorize an agreement with Energy Optimizers USA again for LED lighting replacement of all indoor and outdoor lighting at the municipal building in Fire Station Number Two. Again, the amount of this contract exceeds appropriations by two thousand three hundred and forty dollars, uh, which will be uh, covered by budgeted budgeted funds for exterior maintenance of the municipal building. Again, we will receive a ten-year warranty on the materials as well as a one-year warranty on the labor. And the city is also going to be eligible for $10,817 in rebates from DPNL at the conclusion of the project. Thank you. Is there a motion? Make a motion that we approve resolution 18R34. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Blakesley, second by Councilman Ehlers, that we do approve resolution 18R34 as presented. Are there any comments? I'll just make one, and that is. Um, during our workshop last time, we did hear this presentation, and uh, I was really glad that we had the presentation because it made me understand what was happening. Uh, I'm not into the lighting and everything, and but it was very clear and concise. And it's interesting also to recognize that even though we have an expenditure, we're also going to be rebated back some of those funds. Great. So thank you very much. Anybody else? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Farce? Yes. Councilmember Lewis? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Gerhard? Yes. Vice Mayor Herbst? Yes. Mayor Setzer? Yes, and the motion passes 7 0. Resolution 18 R 35, Mr. McDonald. A resolution extending a temporary moratorium on the acceptance, consideration, and or granting of any applications for zoning regarding shooting grounds or ranges 
and issuance of permits to discharge firearms as related to such uses within the city of Vandalia and providing a limited exception thereto. Thank you. Mr. Cruzzi. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So at Council's November 6th meeting uh, of 2017, Council imposed a six-month moratorium, which is set to expire May 6th. Uh, staff recommends an extension of that moratorium for an additional six months uh, while the Miami Valley shooting grounds litigation is ongoing and while zoning regulations regarding shooting grounds are being considered. Uh, now, then again, this new moratorium, again, would not apply to limited 21-gun salute type of firearm discharges at memorial events and funerals. Thank you. Is there a motion? I move that we approve Ordinance 18-R-35 as presented. Second. It's been moved by Councilwoman um, Farr, second by Councilman Gerhardt, that we do approve Resolution 18-R-35. Are there any comments? I do have one comment. We mentioned the 21 gun salute. I just happened to think, what about starter pistols and things like that at the track meets that the school puts on? Does, how detailed does this need to be? I'm going to go on a limb and say they've probably never asked for a permit for those types of events, but... I, I, I think I would agree. It usually those are the starting pistols, and not necessarily the types of firearms they that fall they this. Okay. use in regular military salutes and things like that. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Lewis. Yes. Councilmember Ayler's. Yes. Councilmember Blakesley. Yes. Councilmember Gerhard. Yes. Councilmember Fars. Yes. Vice Mayor Herbs. Yes. Mayor Setzer. Yes, and the motion passes 7-0. We have an ordinance this evening in its first reading, and that's 18 on dash 07. Mr. McDonald. 18-07, an ordinance approving the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances and a resolution as part of the various component codes of the codified ordinances, providing for the adoption and publication of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances and repealing ordinances and resolutions in conflict therewith. Thank you, Mr. Cruzzi. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So this ordinance does approve the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances and resolutions uh, passed by council during 2017, as well as incorporating amendments to the High Revised Code. Thank you. Is there a motion? Make a motion we approve ordinance 18-07 in its first reading. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Gerhardt, second by Councilman Ehlers, that we do approve Ordinance 18-07 in its first reading. Are there comments? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Gerhardt? Yes. Councilmember Fars? Yes. Councilmember Lewis? Yes. Vice Mayor Hurt? Yes. Mayor Setzer? Yes, and the motion carries 7-0. We have no ordinances in their second reading, nor do we have any emergency ordinances. And that brings us to reports from boards and commissions. And there's a variance request at 237 South Dixie Drive. Mr. Uh, Cruzzi. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so toward independence, an adult day habilitation service is requesting a variance to allow three signs for a nonconforming use at 237 South Dixie Drive, where one 12 square foot sign is permitted. Uh, the property is located in the residential multifamily district that does not permit non-residential uses. Uh, the applicant has installed one building sign, which is 12 square feet, and two sign faces on the freestanding sign. Uh, however, the, free, the freestanding sign is a non-conforming uh, uh, because it doesn't meet setback. It's, it has a height of 10 feet where six feet is the maximum permitted. Again, and it's a post and panel sign where monument signs are required. Uh, Non-conforming signs are required to be brought into compliance if the sign is altered in any way in structure or size. Uh, so the Board of Zoning Appeals reviewed this request at its March 28th meeting. They voted two to one to deny the variance. However, because a concurrence of three members is required for the BZA to take action, uh, this matter comes before council with no official recommendation from the BZA. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? Your Honor, move that we deny the variance request at 237 South Dixie Drive. Second. It's been moved by uh, Councilman Lewis, second by Vice Mayor Herbst, that we deny the variance request at 237 South Dixie Drive. Are there any comments from council members? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Blixley? Yes. Councilmember Gerhard? Yes. Councilmember Farce? Yes. 
Councilmember Lewis? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Vice Mayor Herbs? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Setzer? Yes, and the motion to deny the variance to 237 South Dixie Drive has passed. Uh, you have the Planning Commission minutes of March the 13th. Are there any comments about those? And that brings us to council comments, starting with Mr. McDonald. I'm going to miss Doug. It's, I, I work with him uh, a lot, really respected him, and uh, uh, my condolences to his family, and I'm just profoundly sad. Thank you. Mr. Cruzy? Okay, I'll be brief because I assume everybody's going to have a few words. I just, I just no, I needed to thank Doug for his friendship and guidance over the past four years. I mean, his leadership, commitment to doing the right thing and leading by example, not only in the police department, but uh, throughout the organization and the community, and his dedication, again, not only to the police department, uh, to the city to city organization as a whole, as well as the community. You know, as, as Doug was near retirement, it wasn't uncommon during our staff meetings uh, for Doug to not venture off course, but to express his concerns about the community, and and where he thought the community was heading uh, things he thought we should be paying better attention to that weren't specifically related to his department um, again just his overall concern concern for the city as a whole that's all i have thank you councilman ehlers yes i'd like to say a couple words about uh doug i know that uh uh council and mayor were all deeply saddened by the uh passing unexpected passing of, uh, of Doug Knight and uh, we'd like to pass on our condolences to his wife Colleen his son Stephen his daughter Aaron and uh, his two granddaughters um, there will be a viewing for Doug at uh, St. Christopher Church on Wednesday from 4 to 8 and there will be mass on Thursday at 1030 in the morning um, I'd say for about the last year, year and a half, Doug Knight and a few others uh, always started off our day with breakfast in the morning. And uh, so uh, been on vacation with Doug uh, and truly enjoyed our breakfast meetings every morning. We uh, talked about a lot of issues, uh, tried to solve a lot of problems, uh, although there are many times I think we created more problems than we solved. But uh, he was a true friend, and he will truly be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Blakesley? I'd be remiss if not, not to say anything. I think several of us had said we weren't going to, but I do appreciate everybody that has commented about Chief Knight. Uh, and thank you, Reverend Weeks, for Basically, I think some of those same thoughts were mine and putting those into eloquent words. And ever since Chief Knight had been here, I had such a respect for him and had such a respect for the community. And I think that's what I'll remember him the greatest for, as well as a, as a good friend. And, and I think it's still a little raw. I would love to say more and more, but I, I think uh, I'll leave that to others. Councilwoman Farce. It's just so hard to to say this so soon. I think we're all just such in shock. But Reverend Weeks, thank you so much because you had all those adjectives mm -hmm. that uh, are just the, the story of Doug. I mean, he was just a gentleman in, in every respect I mean, and a friend to all of us. And he loved Vandalia. And I think that's his love for everybody else in our city just came out in everything he said and did and I he will be so missed thank you thank you councilman Gerhardt well I mean like we said we were gonna let Bob say for us but chief Knight with him in there we never I personally in 16 years or so never worried about one thing related to the police department he was a rock but as much as anything, he was one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Always calm, cool, laid back, and just a, a good all-around guy. So you'll be very missed. Thank you. Councilman Lewis? He was, um, <clears throat> he was a good friend. He was a neighbor. And um, above all, he was always a true gentleman. 
and I will miss him. Vice Mayor Herbs. Well, I certainly echo the comments that everyone here tonight has spoken. Um, he was a, a true friend. Uh, he was a he was a class act, and uh, he made Vandalia proud. And we're certainly all going to miss him. Um, that's all I have. Well, Chief Knight and I went back from the very beginning that he was here. And in those days, in the very early days, the air show was not like it is today. It was kind of like a Vandalia thing and almost everybody participated. And I had the fortune to be out there with him. And from that day on, his love for Vandalia was expressed in every way that you can imagine. And uh, will he be missed? You better believe it. And uh, I just hope that he was an inspiration to all of us here, and I think that uh, it, it floods out into the community. And I know just Reverend Weeks with your son, I mean, it's just, that was a typical story. And it was so well put, so. I just like to thank him. So with that, we're adjourned. Yeah. Well, I know. Then I had to come out and load it, so it was a lot easier just dropping the trailer off for a couple of weeks. I, I asked uh, Mike Noroff. Okay. Yeah, I will just be like, yeah.